welcome to First United Methodist Church. We are glad you are joining us for this Palm Sunday. Glad we could celebrate this day together. Do want to remind you, uh, if you're watching on YouTube, to subscribe to this YouTube channel. That way you'll be notified of any time new videos appear on this channel for First United Methodist Church and, and you can keep up to date with everything that is going on in our church. Also, I want to remind you of the text and church feature that we have. The phone number for that is 304-427-5444. If you text the word peace, that registers your attendance with us. If you text the word prayer, you will receive a prayer request form that you can fill out and then send back in and, and share your joys and your concerns with your church family. We also ask you to use that number if you are coming to our in-person service, Sundays at 1045. It's very important that you let us know you will be here through that same number, 304-427-5444. If you're gonna be with us Easter Sunday, this Sunday, next, next Sunday, Please text April 04, April 04, no spaces, April 04, to let us know you will be here. That way we can plan and prepare to have the safest possible worship experience for in person. So please use that if you're going to be joining us in person. Do want to let you know that if you or someone you know is still waiting for a vaccine, still looking for a way to get a vaccine, please call the church office and give us your name, date of birth, and a phone number, and we can help you find a way to get that vaccine. So please call the church office, 304-522-0357, and give us that information, and we can help you uh, get that vaccine. We are glad that you are joining us this morning. Glad to be a, a part of church family this day. Let us begin our Palm Sunday celebration in a time of prayer. If you would like to share a prayer concern while watching this, you can put those in the comment section below. Let us join together now in prayer. With great joy, we welcome you, Jesus. The journey has been long, and we have greatly anticipated entering the holy city. You come into our hearts and our lives, humbly, patiently, encouraging us to learn and to grow, to take journeys of hope and of healing. Open our hearts today to hear your words as we sing praise to you, Hosanna, Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. We pray all of this in the name of the one who taught us to live, to love, and to pray the words we pray together now. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen.
everyone, I am Shauna Chambers, and I'm the Director of Children's Education here at First Church, and happy Palm Sunday. I'm going to do a little bit of what I did um, in virtual Sunday school, and I'm going to bring a Disney movie right here, okay? And I'm going to talk about Mulan, because Mulan kind of reminds me of Jesus, but only in a little way, but um, I'm going to explain that to you. You see, um, Mulan was supposed to um, live out her life a certain way, um, especially um, in her culture, all right? And so uh, the women always do like this, like, test, all right, where they put on their makeup, and they dress a certain way, and they present themselves, and she failed miserably. She didn't Oh, she didn't live up to those expectations. Um, and Jesus was supposed to live a certain way. He was supposed to act a certain way. And he never did that. He always went against the grain. He healed on the Sabbath. He, um, he went against what the government and religious leaders were expecting of him. He made them question. And um, Mulan continued to push the grain too because then there was a war that happened and um they were going to send her dad to war but he was too old and she knew that he would die so she chopped off her hair and she she stole her dad's equipment and she decided that she was going to fight the war and pretend to be her father and she ended up, even though she got caught and she ended up getting kicked out and everything, but she ended up being the one that saved her people. Sound familiar? You see, Jesus, Jesus did the exact same thing, but in a bigger mind frame because he didn't just save his people. He saved everyone. He went against the grain. He died on that cross for us. And you see the religious leaders, they would do anything to make sure to stop him. And that kind of reminds me of one of my favorite poems by Maya Angelou. And I'm just going to put a little bit, I'm going to say just a little bit of it. All right. And it says, you may shoot me with your words. You may cut me with your eyes. You may kill me with your hatefulness, but still like air, I rise. That is exactly what this week is going to be about for Jesus. Because the people that are praising him today, a couple days later, they are going to be ridiculing him with their words, spitting at him, beating him. They're going to end up killing him. But on Sunday, he will rise. And I am so thankful for that. Let us pray. Dear God, thank you for giving us your son. Giving us your son to sacrifice for us and saving each and every one of us. Please help us remember to not hurt people with our words, but lift each other up. And let us remember the, the reason of this week and praise you each and every day of our lives. Amen. The city was Jerusalem The time was long ago The people called him Jesus The crime was the love he showed He 
15 verses 1 through 15 of the Common English Bible. At daybreak, the chief priests with the elders, legal experts, and the whole Sahendran formed a plan. They bound Jesus to lead him away and turned him over to Pilate. Pilate questioned him, Are you the king of the Jews? Jesus replied, That's what you say. The chief priests were accusing him of many things. Pilate questioned him, Aren't you going to answer? What about all these accusations? But Jesus gave no more answers, so that Pilate marveled. During the festival, Pilate released one prisoner to them, whomever they requested. A man named Barabbas was locked up with the rebels who had committed murder during an uprising. The crowd pushed him forward and asked Pilate to release someone as he regularly did. Pilate answered to them, 
Do you want me to release to you the king of the Jews? He knew that the chief priests had handed him over because of jealousy. But the chief priests stirred up the crowd to have him release Barabbas to them instead. The Pilate replied, Then what do you want me to do with the one you call king of the Jews? They shouted, Crucify him. Pilate said to them, Why? What wrong has he done? They shouted even louder, Crucify him. Pilate wanted to satisfy the crowd, so he released Barabbas to them. He had Jesus whipped and handed him over to be crucified. My name is Norma Denning, and I'm reading today's scripture from the Mark chapter 5, verses 23 through 39. I'm using the Common English Bible. They tried to give him wine mixed with myrrh, but he didn't take it. They crucified him, they divided up his clothes, drawing lots for them to determine who would take what. It was nine in the morning when they crucified him. The notice of the formal charge against him was written, the King of the Jews. They crucified two outlaws with him, one on his right and one on his left. People walking by insulted him, shaking their heads and saying, ha, so you were going to destroy the temple and rebuild it in three days, were you? Save yourself and come down from that cross. In the same way, the chief priests were making fun of him among themselves together with the legal experts. He saved others, they said, but he can't save himself. Let the Christ, the King of Israel, come down from the cross. Then we'll see and believe. Even those who had been crucified with Jesus insulted him. From noon until three in the afternoon, the whole earth was dark. At three, Jesus cried out with a loud shout, Eloi, Eloi, lama, sabachthani. My God, my God, why have you left me? After hearing him, some standing there said, Look, he's calling Elijah. Someone ran, filled a sponge with sour wine, and put it on a pole. He offered it to Jesus to drink, saying, Let's see if Elijah will come and take him down. But Jesus let out a loud cry and died. The curtain of the sanctuary was torn in two from top to bottom. When the centurion who stood facing Jesus saw how he died, he said, This man was certainly God's son. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God.
Hi, I'm Scott Sears, one of the pastors here at First United Methodist Church. Uh, just an explanation to you about why I am, you know, in a different setting than you were just in a moment ago. Uh, when I first recorded the sermon uh, in the sanctuary, I later discovered that there was some information in it that was uh, not correct. I used it as an illustration, and it wasn't correct, so uh, I needed to fix that rather than put false information out there. We have too much of that stuff these days. But rather than do that, I decided just to re-record it in my office the next day. So, here we are. Um, I get to read the scripture lesson to you this morning, from or this day, from Mark chapter 15, part of the scripture lesson. But before I do that, would you pray for me, even as I pray for us all? Lord, it is not by might, it's not by power, and it most certainly is not by cleverness of imagination that your word is read or proclaimed, but it is by your spirit. So may that spirit come, rest upon each of us, work through all of us, that we may find ourselves in the presence of the living word, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Mark 15, 16 through 22, from the Common English Bible. The soldiers led Jesus away into the courtyard of the palace known as the governor's headquarters. And they called together the whole company of soldiers. They dressed him up in a purple robe and they twisted get together a crown of thorns and put it on him. They saluted him. Hey, King of the Jews! Again and again they struck his head with a stick. They spit on him and knelt before him to honor him. When they finished mocking him, they stripped him of the purple robe and put his own clothes back on him. Then they led him out to crucify him. Simon a man from Cyrene, Alexander and Rufus's father, was coming in from the countryside. They forced him to carry the cross. They brought Jesus to the place called Golgotha, which means skull place. This is the word of God for us, the people of God. May all thanks be to God. In the Disney movie, Disney Pixar movie, so it's an animated film, Inside Out, I really like the way that uh, memories and the interplay between memory and emotion is shown. The, the film starts out about a child and uh, Every memory is tied to a specific emotion who become other characters in the movie. They're either sad, they're happy, they're afraid, or they're angry. And uh, as things go on in the story, and spoiler alert to you here, uh, as the subject grows up, we discover that you know memories cannot be categorized with just one emotion. Sometimes sadness and happiness get mixed together. Sometimes fear and anger. Sometimes anger and sadness. Sometimes we feel all emotions when we think about memories. It's one of the reasons that on Palm Sunday, especially this Palm Sunday, I wanted this particular lesson read to you. It's a long lesson. I, I get that. It's a whole chapter from, from Mark's Gospel. And when it comes to telling the story of Jesus' arrest and Jesus' crucifixion, Mark has one of the longest tellings, despite him having one of the shortest Gospels. But I wanted this to be before us, even on Palm Sunday, because another at other times we refer to this Sunday as Passion Sunday. 
And I thought it was important that we have this story in a year that we're not having any other Holy Week services. That we have this whole story of what happens to Jesus. Not just uh, the happiness of him riding into to Jerusalem on a donkey. We've had that in the songs. We have that in the telling of the gospel that way. Here we get more. We get more of the mixture of emotions that we need to remember around Jesus. We get to hear about his trial and how that was set to go against him from the very beginning. And yet Jesus showed no anger. We get to hear about his arrest and his treatment at the hands of the soldiers. And we eventually get to hear about him being taken to the place where he would face the crucifixion. Death on a cross. One of the most humiliating deaths that uh, we can imagine. You know, I like the way our cross is portrayed in the in the sanctuary. It, it, it's almost eye level if you're the right height. And that's how most Roman crosses were. They didn't hang people way up in the sky as we often see portrayed. But they liked to have their criminals eye level with folks so that when they walked by they could look them in the eye and that person being crucified be humiliated being seen in, in the state they were there on the cross by those who knew them and by strangers. I like the telling, the mixture of the telling of the story of, of Palm Sunday and the passion of Jesus because it shows how everything turned topsy-turvy for Jesus even after he came into Jerusalem triumphantly. And I also like the way, as Mark tells the story, almost everything seems to focus on Jesus. Our eyes continue to be turned towards Jesus and what he is doing. We see him being exalted. We see him being tried. We see him being taken to the place of the skull. It all seems to focus on him, except for these few verses that I read from the story, where some unknown person from the countryside takes center stage as he is forced to carry Jesus' cross. Simon of Cyrene, someone we know very little about, even though the early church apparently knew him well enough to name family members of his. But to us, he's, he's just another stranger plucked from the crowd to do the bidding of oppressive soldiers, oppressive soldiers who were in control of this entire situation going on. Now, honestly, as I, as I read the story from, from Mark's gospel in preparation for today, I got to wondering why Jesus even needed someone to carry his cross for him. I know that in most of the, the movies and depictions, and, and even in some of the other gospel accounts, Jesus is so terribly injured by the point he takes up the cross that it's plainly obvious why Simon has to carry it. But in Mark's gospel, that's not quite the case. Jesus has not been so severely beaten in this gospel. The text doesn't say that. It simply says that as Jesus was getting ready to go there, they pulled Simon out of the crowd and made him carry the cross. I had to wonder why. Part of me began to think that maybe this was a little bit more humiliation they wanted to throw upon Jesus in this moment. They were calling him, teasing him about being the king of the Jews. 
So why not, at this moment, treat him like a king? Give him royal treatment and make some unknown subject do his dirty work by carrying the cross. It could have been that. It could have also been that the soldiers wanted to make sure the crowds that had gathered there knew who was really in control. They wanted to prove that no one was safe from their power and their authority. Yes, they punished criminals, but they had their eye on everyone. Even, even those folks coming in from the countryside. So they could just pluck some person out of the crowd and make them do something they don't want to do. And it could have also been that Jesus was just too beaten down, too tired, too unable to carry his own cross. It just seems like there could have been more reasons as well. Reasons that get mixed up even as emotions do. And it could be that Mark tells us this story this way to remind us of something, to call on our own memories of Jesus. Because who can forget that Jesus said, anyone who wants to follow me must pick up the cross and follow. Perhaps this whole story about Simon of Cyrene, the cross bearer, was a reminder to us that we too are sometimes compelled, sometimes asked, and sometimes willingly called upon to carry a cross, a burden for the kingdom of God. When I was a youngster, I can't remember, but somewhere between third and fifth grade, going, attending worship at Mount Hope United Methodist Church, uh, I was enrolled in the Acolyte program. I say enrolled because no one really asked me if I wanted to do it. I just remember being compelled. I didn't really like the idea. At that time, they made all the Acolytes wear these really strange looking robes not like the choir robes that we put on ours, but really strange looking robes. And I didn't care for that. Um, but I did it. I went in for the training, I wore the robe. I, I bore the light of Christ in to the service and carried it out at the end to remind folks that the light of Christ needs to go into the world and the light of Christ needs to be carried by us into the world. I love the fact that here at First Church we have young people lining up to be the ones who will do this. Maybe our robes are that much better. I don't think so. I've talked to some of these kids and it's because they understand the importance of their faith being something they show to everyone around them. Reminding people of that faith is important. Very important. Especially when it's a faith that's willing to pick up the cross and follow Jesus. It's especially important on a Palm Sunday like today where We've once again had two mass shootings in our country just in the last 10 days. We had eight Asian Americans, a group Asian Americans that has faced increasing hostility in this country for many reasons, but even because some people think it's cute to refer to our current pandemic as a China virus forgetting what that says to those of Asian descent and how it dehumanizes them in some way. Ten people killed in Boulder, Colorado for reasons 
well, reasons we'll probably never understand. Simply because they were shopping in a grocery store. You know, since the time of the pandemic, one of the most sobering things that I've learned is that, you know, these mass shootings haven't stopped. Not one bit. In fact, during 2020, mass shootings went up almost 30% from the year before. 30%. That number just blew my mind. It blew my mind because all during this last year, we were focused so much on, you know, doing things to keep other people safe, doing things that would stop death, doing things that would help even those that we don't know, that I can't imagine. And we're still allowing such terrible violence to take place in our midst. Folks, a lot of people have been hoping, and I've been praying, that we would somehow come out of this better than what we went into it. Many people just have been hoping and praying that we get back to normal. Folks, I don't, I don't want to go back to normal. Because normal just means you know, maybe though maybe COVID deaths go down, but gun deaths continue up. I don't want that normal, if that's what it means. But maybe, maybe this could all be just a reminder to us that there are opportunities for us as Christians, for those of us who are in the kingdom of God, to just stop sitting on the sidelines and maybe hear the prompting of the Holy Spirit say, get up and carry a cross. Find some way to balance gun rights with violence that kills. Perhaps we're hearing Simon's story today to remind us that cross-carrying, even cross-carrying in the world we live, is still needed. It's not an easy thing. There are no simple solutions. It's painful. It's hard. And it's going to take us some figuring out to balance anything. But as Jesus walked up that hill to where he would die and change the whole world by his actions, through his sacrifice, some little known person, yes, he was named Simon, but his name could have been yours. Some person picked up his cross and helped him change the world helped him get to the place where the world would change. My brothers and sisters, if Simon doesn't remind us of that, then I think any lessons we've learned in the last 12 months have just kind of been wasted. So I'm glad this year we get to hear a mixture of the story. The Hosanna of the Palms, the trial, the mistreatment by the soldiers, and even the walk to the hill, the hill where everything changed, a walk that was taken not by Jesus alone, but by each of us as we carry the crosses that our world needs us to carry.
my brothers and sisters, remember Jesus. And be Simon. Amen. We do thank you for your continued giving of your tithes and your offerings to, to your church, for your continued giving of your gifts and talents and lives to the children of God. Remind you, there are, are several ways to give of your tithes and offerings. You can mail those in, you can drop them off, you can bring them if you come to our in-person worship, or you can set up a bank draft, and we can help you with any of those. If you just call the church, we can help you set up any way to continue in your tithing and your offering to your church. Let us offer a prayer of praise, a blessing over our gifts and our tithes. The crowds offered you their coats to walk on. They waved palm branches, honoring your presence. Today we honor you, Lord, with our faithful tithes and our offerings. We lay these gifts before you, humble tokens of our love and our affection for you. Amen.
receive this benediction. Wherever you go, may God go with you. And whatever you need, may God provide. Whenever you stumble, may God lift you. And when, at the end of your days, you lay yourself down for the last time, May God raise you up for all time. Amen.